Malaysia. Malaysia, which has the highest number of coronavirus cases in Southeast Asia, has been seeing encouraging signs as the health ministry reports that the rate of new coronavirus infections appear to be slowing down. That and more updates from our EBC correspondent, Ruby Tinawin. Ruby? Yes. Um, Welcome back, Ruby. Malaysia's health. Uh, yes, thank you, Alma. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm here to give you updates of what's happening in Malaysia at this uh, point in time. Mm -hmm. well, Malaysia's Health D Director General, Dr. Uh, Noor Hisham Abdullah, said there are early signs that efforts taken by the government and the Ministry of Health is curbing the virus uh, and it is working. Mm -hmm. So he was referring to a graph that uh, prepared by the Malaysian Institute of Economic Research which portrayed projected an actual trajectory on the number of cases from March 24 to March 30th. So he said the graph showing actual trajectory is gradually flattening. Mm -hmm. However, he pointed out that the next two weeks is crucial in determining if the situation can continue to improve. Dr. Hisham also highlighted that Malaysia reported its highest number of daily recoveries 108 cases on Wednesday, that's yesterday, April 1st, bringing the total number of recoveries to 645. The current um, recovery rate as of this day is 22%. That's uh, what uh, he mentioned. So Malaysia, as of yesterday, reported um, 142 new COVID-19 cases, 45 deaths, bringing the total number of cases to 2,908. Now, as the country tightens control in the second phase of the movement control order, which is set to run uh, from yesterday until April 14, Malaysian government has limited the distance a person can travel to buy food and other essentials only within to 10 kilometers of their home. The same rule also applies to those who are seeking health care and medical services. So this announcement was made yesterday. So according to a Federal Gazette on the Road Transport uh, Order 2020, signed by Health Minister Dato Sri, uh, Dr. Adham Baba, which stipulates that this movement condition applies to any person who moves from one place to another within the infected local area or from one infected local area to another infected local area. It also states that when traveling, a person shall not be accompanied by another unless it is reasonably necessary, while those who are out to perform any official duty, including any essential services, shall carry with them an authorization letter from their employers. Malaysians who need to leave the house for any other special or particular reason are required to obtain written permission from uh, the police uh, headquarters. Any person who contravenes any provision shall, upon conviction, be liable uh, to a fine not exceeding 1,000 ringgit or uh, to imprisonment not more, not more than six months or to both. Now, under the updated regulation, the list of essential services has also been cut from 22 to 10. 22 to 10 to limit public movement to contain COVID-19 virus. The 10 services, which are still deemed as essential, are in the area of food, water, energy, communication, and internet, security and defense, solid waste, public cleansing management, sewerage, healthcare and medical industry. Banking and finance, uh, e-commerce, logistics are also counted. However, um, broadcasting and wildlife, airport services are not included in the new list. Therefore, they are not allowed to operate anymore in the next two weeks of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Now, the Institute of Democracy and Economic Affairs, they welcome the stimulus package introduced by the government. However, uh, they uh, suggest that a long-term plan is needed to actually pave way to the economic crisis that they foresee uh, will happen. So they said uh, the plan is only good for 6 to 12 months, but um, after that, they don't want to see government finding themselves getting out of, uh, you know, from a public health crisis, but mm -hmm. moving into an economic crisis. 
Yes. So what they uh, suggested, they urged the government for a long-term uh, economic plan. And uh, one of the suggestions uh, they uh, submitted was uh, to create an SME distress center. Because in the initial stimulus package plan, SMEs felt that there you know, not much of uh, privilege, not much of incentives for them. So um, having this SME distress center... Uh, which could act as a one-stop information and business support platform would really help SMEs. Now, in response to this, the uh, Prime Minister actually set up a special cabinet committee to balance uh, economic priorities and to also enforce effective uh, movement control order. So they set up this uh, so-called special cabinet committee. The role is to... Um, develop strategic measure to safeguard Malaysia's economy and also to look into labor market affected by COVID-19. So the uh, committee will focus on um, uh, key areas such as measures to sustain Malaysia's economic engines, particularly SMEs during uh, this um, MCO or movement control order and to also ensure effective mitigation efforts in addressing displacement of labor force among Malaysians. Now, the members of this so-called special committee would comprise ministers and senior ministers in the nation's economy and security area. So the defense minister, economy minister are all in here. And they will also engage industry players from various sectors to gather insight from people on the ground. Now, the committee's uh, inception reflects the government's quick response to address issues highlighted by the citizens and the Malaysian business community. On a similar note, uh, Entrepreneur and Cooperative Development Minister um, Jafar says the government will improve existing aid packages meant for SMEs. So he said the government... Um, uh, in order to further mitigate the effect of COVID-19 pandemic. And, and this will be announced by the Prime Minister next week after discussion at the ministry level and, uh, you know, and those issues are brought to the Economic Action Comi uh, Council. So uh, the SMEs, if you can recall, they actually uh, uh, raised their dissatisfaction over the 250 billion ringgit um, economic stimulus, uh, stimulus package, rather, which was announced last week because uh, they said they did not much benefit uh, for them. Now, um, what the, mess what the message that they're trying to say is the government would never deny the importance of SMEs here. But at the moment, the priority of the government was to overcome the virus pandemic. The uh, former... Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad uh, his, has also shared his concern that rebuilding economy not only in Malaysia but around the world, especially those countries that were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, will take a longer time. So he acknowledged the fact that the, there will be a terrible impact yeah, on world economy as a whole. And he also said that um, the uh, restriction movement imposed by various governments caused many businesses to only conduct a fraction of their usual activities, reduction in productivity, and, and that would cause the world economy to shrink. So uh, he was responding to one of a question um, when, uh, from his viewers when he was asked what... Uh, what uh, impact of COVID-19 he think, uh, you know, what was the impact of COVID-19 to uh, the world. Now, he said that uh, he was confident Malaysian uh, or Malaysia as a whole would be able to weather the current crisis. The key would be to rebuild the foundations of the economy. He said it, this would rest on the shoulder of all Malaysians. He suggested that those who are finally, uh, financially affected and looking for extra income should look for alternative means. So say, for example, uh, doing business from home, such as selling home-cooked food. Mm -hmm. So the former prime minister 
is uh, now back to his home, keeping himself busy, reading, and uh, doing uh, all the things that he loved to do that he cannot do while he was in the office. Mm -hmm. So um, other updates that we have, the government came up with new standard operating procedures to those uh, um, S uh, NGOs here that are trying to uh, provide uh, aid distribution to the needy. So um, they said there's some uh, restrictions that they need to follow, such as making sure that only two person in each of the NGOs are allowed to make delivery, wearing masks, you know, putting uh, sanitizers, and all uh, keeping social distancing. And, and uh, part of this new procedure is uh, whenever NGOs are out to distribute goods to the needy, they will be accompanied by enforcers um, well coordinated by the welfare department. And also, um, on a positive note, yes. uh, the crime rate, especially in Kuala Lumpur area, drops 57% during the first two weeks of the movement control order. Yes. So this was reported by um, the uh, Kuala Lumpur police chief, Mazlan Lazim. He said the crime index had dropped to 184 more than half the usual threshold of 432 before the MCO. And Good similarly, news. Petaling Jaya District as well reported that um, there was a drop of 40 to 50 percent mm -hmm. in the five days of MCO or the okay. lockdown. Okay, so, uh, in another state, yes, uh, Alma? Yes, um, I'd like to ask you, would you say that testing has increased, as you said, the curve is flattening? Because in many countries, the importance of mass testing has, is now being slowly recognized. Do, do you think that testing uh, has increased in your country because that's why the curve is flattening? Uh, yes, Alma, indeed. Because in one of the reports that I made, the government uh, set up many quarantine centers, which also serve as testing center. Mm -hmm. And they also actually came up with mobile testing facilities as well, mm -hmm. that you do not need to get into a, a clinic or hospital. I mean, it's like a drive-through concept. Mm -hmm. Like you just drive your car, and for every stop, there will be health official conducting all the checking for you. Mm -hmm. And, and Ruby, it was also yes. announced by the uh, health uh, director general that they increased the target uh -huh. of, uh, you know, their quota for testing each day. Okay, Alma? okay. $973 or 4,200 Malaysian ringgit in uh, uh, I know, cash transfer. Is this a one-time uh, aid or is this for a period of months? Uh, for uh, which one are you referring to? This is the aid granted to you, uh, to uh, citizens, right? There are varieties, actually, uh, Alma, like depending on which uh, uh, category uh -huh. uh, you, you fall into. So uh, different okay. groups uh, will have different uh, package, different, uh, you know, different uh, uh, benefits uh, by the government. Because mm -hmm. uh, we must remember that businesses will be uh, closing or they will start laying off after this pandemic because of the uh, crisis. So... I think there's a lot more that we have to um, look into as uh, this goes by. But uh, yes, I know we will be getting more updates from you. Ruby, thank you so much for your updates and we'll be hearing from you again tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time. Yes. Yes. From uh, EBC Malaysia Bureau, this is Ruby Tinawin. We live in interesting times.